We're still dead and you're still looking for your new television. That's how it looks. Welcome to part 2 on how to buy a modern television. Death is nothing but to live defeated and inglorious as to die daily. You're so pathetic, my friend. Live as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. If you want a thing done well, do it yourself. So, you want to continue? All right. Can I say a joke first? Sure. Gandhi, go ahead. You know that I look pretty tired. I'm absolutely pumped out from my French self-defense class last night. I've never run so far before. Ever. Very funny. So get on with the joke. If you wish to be a success in the world, promise everything, deliver nothing. So let's move on. In part one we covered size because size is where you, the television buyer, have the most control over. For all other points you more or less rely on what the television manufacturers will deliver. You are powerless on what new technologies will be introduced. There are many factors involved which are beyond the average consumer's influence. As a second step after size you can choose among two type of television, that is its technology. For the average user, there are basically only two, or at best three types available. I apologize in advance for using acronyms here, but we will explain them as we move along. The first TV type is the classic LCD television. Without the modern LED backlights, they are still a bit cheaper than the most prevalent LED TVs, also called LED LCD television. You might see both terms in different publications but don't be confused. They both the same. So what is the difference between LCD and LED LCD? Aren't they confusing these acronyms? I think we have another movie planned to cover it all in detail but Napoleon can try to offer a quick general explanation. LCD is short for liquid crystal display. You probably knew that, right? LCD does not shine by itself. It needs something to illuminate it. For a classic LCD that's a form of fluorescent light, it shines through the LCD to create a picture. Some LCD can still have a better picture than some of the budget LED televisions. Now LED LCD or LED televisions use the LCD technology, but the lighting is done differently. The manufacturers use hundreds of little LED light emitting diodes, that is, to illuminate your television screen. If they illuminate straight from behind the LCD, then the jargon term for it is backlit. Cheaper LED televisions use edge lighting, meaning the LEDs shine in from the side of the television panel, not directly behind it. It's cheaper than a fully backlight screen but it still produces a good image. It's best to study the experts. Reviews to get the scoop on this. LED displays are brighter than LCDs. They also have a better contrast, that means they show more realistic bright and dark areas in an image, but cheap LED could have some really unnatural looking colors. A big plus for the LED television is how thin they are. It makes them perfect for mounting them on a wall. LED are also cool on saving energy, so if that is important to you, then you're in good hands with LED TVs. Most televisions in the medium and upper price class are LED TVs. But there is still one contender in the television race, the plasma televisions. They have been around for a long time, definitely a leader before LCD and LED TVs took over. Plasma televisions run on gas. Okay, no. Kidding? They use tiny gas cells that are squeezed between two sheets of glass. Now each of those gas or plasma cells emits ultraviolet light which strikes red, green and blue spots on the display. Where the light hits, it glows and creates and an image. The strength of the plasma televisions is their deep blacks, their high contrast, the balance in color. Plus you don't have to sit right in front of them. Their viewing angle is greater than that of LCD or LED LCD televisions. Plasmas have some disadvantages though. In 
Europe they have EU energy labels going from a plus 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 down to D, a bit like grades in school. It's probably more immediate in providing the consumer with simple information on energy efficiency than the simple energy star stickers that you might see in US TV stores. So where do LED TVs land in the lettuce soup? Yes, usually a plus or a and a plasma television. See bummer. LED TV use more or less only a third of the power a plasma television needs. There are some potential problems with plasma TVs that might make them suitable only to real television fans, but perhaps not the average TV buyer. Those plasma or gas cells may break if the television is handled too roughly. I know of electronics stores that recommend not tilting plasma televisions when transporting them, just as a precaution. Of course, plasma TVs have gotten better, and you might move them around and nothing will happen. Another factor to be aware of is a possible but rare burn in, or rather image persistence, of stationary images, for example static television station logos, any image that remains on your TV screen for considerable time in electronics stores. This happens occasionally due to the same demo program running over and over. What the store employee then does is usually run some cleaning program that modern plasma TVs have built in for an hour or so and the strange shadows on the screen are wiped off. If you can live with all these caveats, then today plasma TVs still offer the best picture quality, the best color balance, the deepest black levels. However, with some high-end LED TVs close behind, or even equal. If you want good picture quality, bright colors, the slimmest build, and low power consumption then LED LCD is the technology to go for. They can compete quite well with plasma televisions in today's marketplace. Otherwise consumer electronics stores wouldn't be full of them. In the next part we look at more considerations when buying a TV. Got any questions Gandhi? An answer practice is worth more than tons of preaching.